As I was reading the scriptures today, I came to Numbers 36, where I saw a topic that I want to title, Asking for God's Help Like Moses. My name is Bumi Tokong. Hi there. By way of introduction, as a Christian, one might be under an increasing amount of pressure to have all the answers. For example, if you're a leader of a department or you're a leader of a church or you're a leader in your group, you might be under increasing amount of pressure to have all the answers all the time. Forgetting that there are scenarios where you actually need a clear answer from your father because you just don't know. And do not forget that you have someone who has all the answers that you need. Moses as the case study example. Now, if you think about Moses' CV, I mean, who wouldn't want to employ Moses? Look, Moses performed so many miracles. Moses parted the Red Sea. Moses had the Spirit of God that was upon him on another 70 people, and he worked. Moses built the tabernacle. Moses practically saw God. Moses, although he had all this great CV, and even God testified about Moses, in Numbers chapter 12, God said concerning Moses, said, you know what? I don't speak to Moses as I speak to prophets by dreams and visions. No, I speak to Moses face to face. And Moses sees the form of God. This is God talking about Moses, giving Moses the accolade that Moses deserves. But yet, there were times when Moses did not know what to do. And there are two cases in the scriptures that tell us that. These two cases are when the daughters of Zophahad came to him in Numbers 27 and also the record, it records it again in Numbers 36. They came to him because they were at last because they were from the tribe of Manasseh and if they married, their inheritance will have to go to whoever they married. And there was the law about keeping your inheritance in your family. So when they came to to Moses to ask, okay, Moses, here's the scenario. We are all women here. When we get married, the men are going to just take our inheritance if we marry somebody else of our clan. So what should we do? Moses didn't have a clue what to do. The Bible clearly tells us that Moses had to wait a while, go ask God, and God gave him the answer that he needed as to move forward. And the answer was that, yeah, Zeophah had daughters could actually marry somebody from their clan so that they can keep their inheritance. Again, we find the man who worked on the Sabbath day in Numbers 15. Here's a guy who was gathering sticks on the Sabbath day against the law of God. Remember that the law was given to them when they came out of Egypt. And this is now the first day of the second month of the second year. That's where the numbers, the book of Numbers starts from. First day of the second year of, of the second month. Moses clearly didn't have a clue what to do about this guy. So they held him up until Moses had the answer from God. And God spoke to Moses telling him that, okay, the guys should be taken out. All right, so the community should actually stone him to death. One of the lessons we learn here is that even though Moses didn't have the answers that he needed, however, he knew that God was always there for him. That's what we need to remember. Whenever we have cases whereby we clearly don't know what to do, we need to remember that God is there, is there for us and he has all the answers. So here is my point. You have access to him who has all the answers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we are told that we've not received the spirit of this world, but spirit who is from God, that we may understand all that God has freely given us. Again, we're told in Colossians chapter 2 that in him is hidden all the treasures of wisdom. And in Hebrews chapter 4, we are told that we should come confidently to the throne of grace where we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So God is always there for us to ask him whatever questions we need answers for. Don't forget that you may not have the answer to your fingertips, but you have a God who has the answers in all situations and he clearly wants to give you those answers. Again, remember Matthew chapter 5, the words of Jesus, which he says, Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you get the answer. Perhaps it's something to do with buying a car or buying a house or going to a college or taking a job or not. Ask God. He'll tell you exactly what to do. All right. If you like this video, like it. If you like it, share it. If you like it, subscribe to my channel. Write a question or comment below. If you have a private message, then email me to 
admin at boomitokoministries.org. See you soon. God bless.